Good afternoon. I want to show you some of the modifications I've done on the cargo trailer over the weekend. It uh, started out with a very vexing Friday. I had all this ambition and uh, yes, I installed, finally installed the window into the door. Now I, ordered, I had ordered this window last July. It came in last July and it was not a priority window. Uh, the other windows were a priority. As a matter of fact, I have one more I have to put in, a shed window for the AC unit. Um, but I finally put this in, bought this from Rec Pro. Everything about it was wrong. Um, the hardware was missing, no hardware. Uh, there's a little tiny hole in the, in the, in the blind. It has an internal blind. I like that feature but it has a little hole in it. I'm going to try to repair that with a little bit of thread tonight. And um, I'm a little frustrated with that. Hardware didn't come. No template. Instructions were terrible. Three calls to Rec Pro. They weren't very helpful. I will say they were not rude, but they were not helpful. And they gave me wrong information three times. They said I could use butyl tape uh, on this. You cannot use butyl tape on it. Had to take it apart, pull off all the butyl tape. I was in tears all Friday because they were so not helpful. They gave me the, men the dimensions to cut because it didn't have a template. The dimension they told me was totally wrong. Thank God it was wrong. It was too small because if I had cut a hole too large, yeah, I think I'll start crying just thinking of that scenario right now. I'm just relieved that I finally have it in. Because I had to modify the hole that was cut after they told me the wrong dimensions, it's a little cockeyed, but I think I can do a little cosmetic work to, to even that out and to fool the eye uh, into thinking that it's perfect. Got to do a little uh, aesthetic work on the outside of it because I had to run a couple of screws in through the frame where they shouldn't have been simply because I needed something to hold it in place or it just wasn't going to work at all. Um, the hardware was missing, as I said. They said, oh, use number eights, one inch. Thank God I, I knew better than that. And I had to use one and five eight inch uh, long screws. The one inch isn't going to cut it. So finally got it done. Um, yes, I think I'm going to send them an email now that I have you know, I've recovered from the trauma of, of the frustration. We were having a windstorm. I had a hole in the door. It had to get done. And by the grace of God, we got it done. Now, on Wednesday, Bill and Sue came out and he put on the Superman cape again. Thank you, Jesus. He got up on the roof. He put the proper boot on the chimney that I had ordered and uh, he sealed everything up. The next day we had quite a bit of rain, no leaks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bill and Sue. Um, also, they were very helpful uh, because I was telling Bill about how I, I fear the fire, the wood stove here. And he said, that's a good thing. And his wife, Sue, said, well, why don't you convert it to a, a wood pellet stove so that you can use wood pellets? Because I was telling them, um, I'm not real knowledgeable about the woods that are here in this forest. And sometimes I glean wood and it's pine and it has lots of creosote. And she said, well, why don't you try burning pellets? And he thought about it. And then I remembered I had seen some videos uh, that I thought converting wood. Uh, a regular wood stove into a pellet burning stove and I wanted the option to do either or you know I'd still like to burn logs when you really have to have that that strong heat and maybe you know it's a survival situation and you do have access to good hard woods but if you just want the ambiance of a fire and some nice warmth um, that you can better regulate and you know you're not getting a high level of creosote from those wood pellets compared to junk wood, um, then yeah. So here's what I found out to do. And, and I'm gonna try to show you what, it, what I've got in here. And this is a stainless steel metal cylinder and it's what it is is a kitchen utensil holder. And what I did was, because it has holes all in the bottom, just like you see on the sides, I put two bolts 
into the bottom, just two, not four to make four level legs, but two, and um, put a nut on the bottom so it kind of, it rotates. So if you want, it'll rotate at an angle so that you can fill it back up while it's still burning, you know, with a scoop, and you're not gonna burn yourself. You're not gonna have to remove it to fill it. You just fill it up. And then guess what you do? You just, with whatever tool that you're using, you tilt it over and it puts that flame going up into the chimney. So I love it. Let's show you that again, because I think that's clever. And for those of you who are gonna convert your wood stove into the option of burning pellets, this is really cool. Again, I put two bolts in the bottom. They're about an inch off the bottom of the stove so that air can get up through. And instead of having it level, you see it rocks back and forth. So by putting just the two bolts in, it can tilt back to the back so that your flame is going that direction. I love it. I'm not gonna have to clean my glass off as often. Uh, I love it. Now, the second piece I bought is a stainless steel, steel vegetable grilling tray. And I'm going to put two um, corner brackets parallel to each other, bolt them on the bottom so that it also sits up about an inch or an inch and a half. And I will be able to either use the cylinder one or the tray one or use them both together. I love it. The third thing that I did over the weekend, and this is going to be difficult because i got to hop up on this. I have the bed down in the halfway position, meaning just half of the bed down. And uh, I like it like that because I can come out here and I can just kind of sit and pray and drink a cup of coffee and make these cheesy little videos. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be ladylike, ladylike as I cross over this uh, squishy, squishy mattresses and uh, get to the other side. And I got to swing my legs over. Yeah, I'm trying to be as graceful as possible here. I'll just keep the camera on my face. So here we are. I've just about made it over the Great Divide here. The thing that has always bothered me about a ramp door is when those uh, latches are latched on the outside, you cannot escape that door. And now that I have such a an intimida intimidating heat source, like Bill said, it's good to fear a fire. Um, you know, if you have anything that is a fire hazard, and just about anything that we use that has power can be a fire hazard. That's why you use smoke detectors. That's why you use carbon monoxide alarms, smoke alarms, fire alarms, fire extinguishers. With all that being said, I still get claustrophobic just thinking about only having one door to get out. So here's what I've done. And we're still in the experimental phase with this, but I think it's gonna work out great. What I did was I put a slide latch back here and I may have to put another one, but that is so that you can unlatch the outside after you've come in here and, and locked this one, go unlock those outside, put locks in them, so that nobody can block you in. Nobody can trap you in. And you have this inner uh, release so that you can uh, uh, get out. You can escape. Now, once you release the ones on the outside and this one is in the lock position, the pressure is going to be put. See, it slides easily now, but that's because they're locked on the outside. But once you release them, the pressure of the door will start pushing and this lever, this slide will be harder to slide. So I, I'm gonna always keep a screwdriver as leverage to just push against that to open it because I've already experimented um, and it works fine. Now, I don't know if this is powerful enough to keep the door closed tight enough so that you can have an air conditioning unit on in here or um, to, you know, to, to burn your fire and not have all your heat escaping or all your cool air escaping. We may have to uh, put another one uh, somewhere that you can reach. See, you can't reach right in here because of this wall of the shower. 
Now here, the cable has been removed. I did that a long time ago, just on this side, so I could get in and out of the trailer. So I am using the hardware of that used to hold the cable to slide that bolt to, to keep the door up in the up position. So I'm excited about that. Um, I have experimented with it. I didn't go outside and examine it to see if it's, you know, nice and sealed up so that you can, you know, have it unlocked in the outside, but have it locked on the inside so that you can get out in an emergency. You know, I still have to work with it. Um, if it doesn't seal like it should to keep out the critters, you know, keep out the, keep from losing the air uh, when you're cooling it and when you're heating it. So those are the modifications, folks. Um, thank you for tuning in to my videos. I think I have uh, introduced a couple of helpful things in uh, talking about that, that uh, stationary window and converting a wood stove, having the option to burn wood as well as wood pellets and the nifty little things that I have going on there. And of course, the experimental phase of the security of having a bolt latch on the back, on the inside of the ramp so that you can unlock the outside and keep it unlocked while you're sleeping, um, but yet you're still secure and it's closed. Have a wonderful day, folks. May God bless you and may God bless America.